Hello, my name is Božedar Novaković and I'm a senior R&D engineer at ANSYS working on the numerical products for optoelectronic simulations. In this presentation, I will show the application of simulation to calculate the electrical and optical figures of merit of single photon avalanche detectors. This work was done in collaboration with Triumph in Canada. The main difference between normal avalanche photodetectors and SPADs is that SPADs are discrete devices with two states, avalanche or no avalanche. This is a consequence of very high gain that causes a runaway avalanche that has to be quenched before the next photon can be detected. SPADs are used in applications that have very low light levels or that re require high spatial and temporal resolution. Standard application areas are time of flight measurements for LiDAR and terrain mapping, fluorescence lifetime imaging spectroscopy, medical imaging and astronomy and high energy physics. One interesting emerging area is high-end image sensors, while SPADs are also considered as candidates for detectors in quantum computing. This table summarizes the main differences between the linear mode APDs and the Geiger mode SPADs with the main differences being in the operating voltage, the operating gain, and the need for quenching. The agenda for today's presentation will cover the dark count rate simulation where avalanche triggering occurs due to processes other than light absorption, such as thermal carrier generation. Then we will discuss how to extract the secondary photon emission from avalanche combining simulation and measurement. Finally, we will show preliminary results for the internal optical crosstalk simulation workflow, where the internal optical crosstalk is an important figure of merit and it is specific to SPAD sensors, unlike CMOS or CCD sensors. Upon illumination, each pixel in a SPAD array undergoes light absorption and carrier generation, followed by a certain avalanche triggering probability. If an avalanche is triggered, this will further cause secondary photon emission. From the reticle side, we can use ANSYS numerical charge solver to simulate the internal electric field and dark carrier generation. Given these quantities, we can calculate the avalanche triggering probability ATP and dark count rate DCR. For the optical side, we can use ANSYS numerical stack and FDTD to calculate the transmission, absorption and secondary emission, as well as the optical efficiency. Combining the electrical and optical simulations, we can calculate the photon production efficiency and various types of crosstalk. In the next section, we will focus on the dark count rate simulation. To illustrate dark noise sources, we can represent a SPAD with a simple PN junction as shown here. The first dark noise source is the Shockley reed hole recombination with trap assisted tunneling. The second noise source is the band to band tunneling, and the third noise source is carrier diffusion from quasi neutral regions into the high field region. This last source is usually not considered in the literature. The total DCR is the sum of contributions from these three noise sources, where each noise source is modeled as a product of the corresponding generation rate and the avalanche triggering probability integrated over space, as shown with these additional equations. This image shows a typical structure and doping profile of a SPAD. The simulation workflow starts with the knowledge of the doping profile. Based on the doping profile, we can calculate the electric field and dark carrier generation using a drift diffusion Poisson solver like ANSYS numerical charge. From the electrical field, we can find ATP, which when combined with the carrier generation rates, gives the dark count rate. The doping profile in charge can be defined using the available parameterized analytical models or an arbitrary profile can be imported on a mesh for better accuracy. ATP plots 
are taken for the carrier generation location at the opposite side of the junction for each carrier type. ATP has weak dependence on the temperature except for the breakdown voltage. And in the case of the device under study here, the electron ATP is higher than the whole ATP. SRH is the dominant process at room temperature and at low to medium over voltages, as can be seen in the bottom right figure. Band to band tunneling becomes non negligible and dominant only at higher over voltages when the tunneling barrier is reduced. Diffusion contribution has similar voltage slope as SRH. It depends on the surface recombination velocity at the contact semiconductor interface, which is a fitting parameter. We can see from the bottom right plot that it is possible to achieve a good match with the measurements. From the temperature dependence, we can see that the SRH with trap assisted tunneling has a higher temperature slope and dominates at higher temperatures in a good design. Man to man tunneling, on the other hand, has a lower temperature slope and dominates at lower temperatures. There are a few takeaways from correlating measurements to the simulation. The first takeaway is that there exists a certain minimum set of process dependent fitting parameters, which in our case are band to band tunneling prefactor, trap energy level, and the surface recombination velocities for electrons and holes. The second takeaway is that time based past measurement and analysis is preferred compared to the frequency counter in order to be able to filter out after pulsing and crosstalk when extracting the dark count rate from the measurement. And we can again see a good match with the available past measurement points. In the next section, we will discuss the way to extract the secondary emission from avalanche. Avalanche current is a source of secondary photon emission. This secondary emission is important because it can lead to the external optical crosstalk between two SPAD arrays facing each other and also to the internal optical crosstalk between different pixels in the same SPAD array. The physical mechanism behind the secondary emission can be generally split into three energy ranges. At lower energies, the secondary emission is due to the indirect interband transitions. At medium energies, it is due to the intraband Bremsstrahlung or carrier acceleration and deceleration in the same band. Finally, at higher energies, it is due to the direct interband transitions. In this work, the way we extract the avalanche photon production is by combining the secondary emission measurement with the optical transmission function uh, and simulation. The measurement depends on both the avalanche photon production spectrum and transmission between the source and the measuring objective. The knowledge of transmission from simulation allows us to correct the measurement and extract the true photon production spectrum. After that, we can perform additional simulations with the true photon production source and predict the angular distribution of secondary emission important for the external crosstalk. The far field secondary emission measurement consists of driving the SPAD array with over voltage, which generates dark avalanches and consequently the secondary emission. The apparatus consists of a microscope, a spectrometer and a camera and works in two modes, the imaging mode and the spectrometer mode. The measurement in the imaging mode for the whole SPAD array surface is shown in the top figure while the spectroscopy image is shown in the bottom image in the units of the number of photons per charge carrier in avalanche per wavelength. In the next step, we simulate the optical transmission between the avalanche region 
and the measuring microscope objective using electromagnetic solvers, ANSI, Slomerico, FDTD, and STAC. The simulation proceeds by placing dipoles in the high field region, calculating the near and far field, and integrating the far field power over the numerical aperture of the measuring microscope objective. From this, we can obtain the total power transmission between the high field region where the photons are produced and the measuring microscope objective, as shown in the top right figure. The oscillation pattern is due to the interference effects in the thin silicon dioxide layer on top of this pad. A successful electromagnetic simulation needs to be able to take into account absorption in silicon, reflection and interference at the silicon-silicon dioxide interface and the finite numerical aperture of the measuring microscope objective. Finally, by using the simulated transmission to correct the measured secondary emission spectrum, we can extract the true avalanche photon production spectrum as shown in the top right figure. The extracted spectrum shows small spurious oscillations, which are a consequence of a slight mismatch between the interference peaks in the measured and simulated results. After taking into account the true photon production spectrum, we can repeat the simulation to produce an angle resolved far field secondary emission as shown in the bottom right figure. This result is important for modeling, for example, the external optical crosstalk between two SPAD arrays facing each other. In the last section, we will discuss some preliminary results from internal optical crosstalk simulations. After light illuminates a SPAD array, the resulting light absorption may trigger avalanches in SPAD pixels. These avalanches produce secondary photon emission, which can propagate between pixels, get absorbed and trigger spurious avalanches in neighboring pixels. Out of all possible paths light can propagate away from the avalanche, there are a couple that may be responsible for the internal optical crosstalk. First, light that undergoes a total internal reflection in SiO2 layer can travel extended distances between pixels. Second, light can directly transmit through trenches between pixels. And lastly, light propagating downward can reflect back from the substrate interfaces unless it is reabsorbed in the meantime. The absorption decay in the substrate will depend on the wavelength. All these paths can be simulated with ANSYS slomerical FDTD. Proceeding to the simulation, we can start with the 2D simulation and three neighboring pixels to save time. SPAD0 is chosen as the source where dipole is placed. The, absor the absorption box analysis boxes are placed in the first and second nearest neighbors, SPADs 1 and 2. There are trenches between every two SPADs. The simulation may start by choosing the dipole source power to correspond to a single photon. After calculating the absorption and generation in SPADs 1 and 2 and multiplying them with the corresponding avalanche triggering probabilities and integrating over the absorption box volume, we get the number of crosstalk avalanches in SPADs 1 and 2 for a single source photon. In the previous section, we calculated the photon production spectrum in the units of the number of photons per avalanche per wavelength which when used here allows us to convert the result to the number of crosstalk avalanches for a single source avalanche per wavelength. To illustrate the previous simulation workflow, here we can see the number of avalanches in SPADs 1 and 2 for a single source photon. After rescaling with the true photon production spectrum, we obtain the number of avalanches in SPADs 1 and 2 for a single avalanche in SPAD 0. Finally, we can integrate over the spectrum to get a total crosstalk in SPADs 1 and 2 for a single avalanche in SPAD 0, as can be seen in the far right figure. Here we can see that for a single avalanche in SPAD 0, we get around 2% crosstalk avalanche in SPAD 1 and around 0.1% crosstalk avalanches in SPAD 2, which is the second nearest neighbor. 
the work to extract the crosstalk from measurements in the form that can be co directly compared with these simulation results is now ongoing. Using ANSYS numerical charge stack and NDTD solvers, it is possible to simulate the most important electrical, optical and combined SPADs figures of merit. We demonstrated workflows for the dark count rate, including the diffusion contribution, which is usually overlooked in the literature. We also demonstrated novel simulation workflows for extracting the secondary photon emission and simulating the internal optical crosstalk in SPAD arrays. The work to compare the simulated internal optical crosstalk to the measurements with laser-induced source avalanche is now ongoing. Thank you very much for your attention.